Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I want to, uh, first of all, thank each and every one of you for being here. There goes my speech. That's the, uh, the, curse, <laughs> the curse of a public servant. But um, I do want to recognize, thank you, Bishop. I want to recognize my fellow elected officials that are here. We'll start with the state delegation. I know Representative uh, Cronin is here. Representative Cassidy is here. I know Representative Dubois is en route. Senator Brady is here. I know that uh, Councilor Cruz from Ward 1 is here. Councilor Nick Castro is here. City Council President Shirley Azak is here. Uh, Jeff Thompson, Ward Councilor, is here. Thank you, Councilor, for being here. Uh, Mark D'Agostino, Vice Chair of the School Committee, is here. DA Tim Cruz from Plymouth County is here. Southeastern South Regional. <laughs> He's wearing many hats. Bishop Tony Branch. Yep, Council President Shirley Azak, uh, I had said she's here as well. Uh, Deb Garland from the City Committee is here. Thank you for being here. Uh, many members of the NAACP are here. Many pastors are here. Uh, but more importantly, Brocktonians are here. And that's what this prayer session was about today, to come together as a community, to listen to the words and guidance and comfort of the, the clergy and the pastors. We need to take wisdom and solace from their words. You'll hear wonderful words of Scripture and guidance, and that's what we need right now. I'm here with the police chief, Manny Gomes. I'd like to read my speech, if I could, please. Good afternoon. I want to thank you all for attending our prayer vigil here at City Hall this afternoon. This is a time for our city to come together as one, to listen to the words of our local pastors and clergy and rabbis and those within the African-American community and NAACP chapter here in the city of Brockton. Their words will, without, without certainty, provide us guidance, wisdom, and comfort as we move forward during this national crisis of sadness and sickening times. Last week, we all suffered an enormous tragedy that's impacting our country, our commonwealth, and our city of Brockton. When I watched that video, I physically almost got sick. We saw a police officer in Minnesota kill an unarmed, handcuffed individual named Mr. George Floyd. It was disgusting. It was criminal. And I hope to God the hammer goes down on that murderer. Amen. 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 I, am, I am here today as the mayor of Brockton, but I'm here as a Brocktonian, as a dad of three. And I want to thank Superintendent Mike Thomas from the Brockton Public Schools and all the teachers, because my three students, my three, two, my three children, and their teachers are doing virtual learning. And they're learning right now about racism and what happened to Mr. Floyd. And it wasn't a one-off. We know this has happened many, many, many times. This one happened to be caught on camera. Right. That's the difference. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right now, we need to acknowledge that for far too long and for, for, for too many people in our nation and in our city, especially communities of color, this fear, hurt, and anger has really become an everyday occurrence. I'm a white man. When I walk down the street and I see a police officer, I don't fear. But my friends that are African American that were brought up a different way truly have a fear that I'll never know. I'll never realize. But I'll tell you right now, I'll look you right in the eye. I'm going to work with all my friends, every race, every creed, every religion, because we deserve it. Change is needed immediately. Right. Immediately. Right. I am committed that the dialogue continue about how we build a Brockton that is safe and welcoming for everyone. And that's the key, for everyone. I've started conversations with our city leaders, our pastors, and our NAACP. And I want to thank President Phyllis Ellis, and I want to thank Bishop Tony Branch. I reached out to them over the weekend. They gave me words of wisdom and support. We're going to continue that conversation. I've already had commitment from many of my friends in the African American community that are going to work with us. Just to list a few, Ollie Spears, John Williams, Shana Barnes, Gwen Knowles, Jackie Jones, just to name a few. People that are here in Brockton and they have a voice and that voice needs to be heard. Heard not just me as the mayor of Brockton, heard by every Brocktonian, young and old, gay and straight, white and black, every Brocktonian needs to hear that now. <laughs> Brockton's strength has always lied in its diversity. Brockton has always been a welcoming home of ethnic backgrounds and diversity. That's what makes Brockton, Brockton. I said this many times. When my grandparents came to work in the factories, they happened to come from Ireland. 
Now we have Nigeria, Angola, Cape Verde, right, Haiti. Just different folks that are coming here to do what's right, to live in a stable community, a safe community, a welcoming community, to do what our grandparents did, to provide for the next generation. It's what makes Brockton Brockton, and it's gonna happen under my watch, but only if we work together. Right. We want an inclusive community where our residents truly feel safe and heard. We must come together, ladies and gentlemen, right now, on this day, to face the national tragedy, the tragedy that Mr. Floyd was murdered, caught on camera, and people reacting. We need to be peaceful when we react, though. We need to be peaceful. When we protest, we can't, we can't go what we've seen last night in Boston. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. It hampers the effort. It doesn't, it doesn't help the effort. Amen. So I look forward to conversations. I want to listen to the speakers today. I want to thank you all. God bless the City of Champions. God bless the Commonwealth. And God bless the United States. Chief Gomes has some words he'd like to share. Thank you very much for being here today. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'd like to share with you that, you know, for most, uh, for most becoming a police officer is a lifelong calling to protect, to serve, and uphold the law, and to do the good thing for our citizens. Every officer takes this oath to uphold the law fairly for everyone. Police departments are judged, and our efforts are measured by how well we protect our residents and save lives through crime prevention and community-based policing. A police department can only succeed with the support and the trust of their community. With that in mind, I, I was sickened by the video of the criminal conduct on a part of those Minneapolis police officers in taking the life of George Floyd. All good police officers who live up to their oath are sickened by what they saw. There is nothing in that disturbing video that is consistent with police training or proper use of force. Nothing. The criminal actions of a few reflect on all police officers. One of the failings of the system is not rooting out those who should have never been police officers swiftly. You know, the Brockton Police Department has worked hard to become one of the most well-trained in the Commonwealth. We continue to advance training in human contact and de-escalation, non-lethal techniques to better serve our community. And the Brockton Police Department is proactive and transparent for its citizens. I wanted to make this statement to reaffirm, reaffirm our commitment to all our citizens and for us to work together side by side for a safer and more collaborative community. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pastor Manny Daphnis, and I pastor Restoration Community Church on the east side in Brockton. Today we have the privilege of gathering together with the clergy caucus of the Brockton interfaith communities, with the Brockton area chapter of the NAACP, with the Brockton PD and the Brockton mayor's office to come together with all of you here to pray. In case you think you're here to gather to hear a political speech and spiel, you are wrong. We are here to cry out unto the Lord, to cry out unto the Lord, because there are certain societal ills and evils that first and foremost require prayer 
And second, then require collective action together. We are so grateful to all who are here in attendance. There are a number of clergymen here. But what we're most grateful is that what you and I, I pray, understand even now, is that we're here to pray. This is going to be an old-fashioned prayer meeting, and maybe you're not accustomed to what that is. But you're about to get hip. And irrespective of whatever faith tradition you are from, our prayer is that wherever you're standing, wherever you're at, you might join in and pray with us, whether you are standing in front of this podium or not. And so with that stated, I want to just share with you really quickly what the order of our prayer time will be. We're going to start off with a time of lament over the effects of racism, and that'll be led by Pastor Rob Connolly of Resurrect Church. That'll be followed by a time of prayer for peace, led by Dr. Steve Warner of Brockton Assembly of God. That'll be followed by a prayer for justice, led by uh, First Lady Mornike Shelton of Living Elevated Church. Followed by prayer for systemic change, led by Rabbi David Jaffe of the Brockton Interfaith Community. And this first portion of prayer will be led just a prayer for our city by Apostle Ed Campbell. Let's pray, starting with Pastor Rob Connolly. Let's go before our God. God, we cry out to you as a people who are in desperate need of your direction in times like this. We are people who understand that regardless of what's happening in our world, we can be thankful that we have a God that not only sees our pain, but also understands our pain. We are a people who know, Lord God, that nonviolence is the way that we must proceed at a time like this. Father, remind us that when people say the times of Dr. King was wasted, when people say our voices haven't been heard, haven't been heard, remind us at times like this that a nonviolent way has given us the change that we have today. The change where blacks and whites can go to school together. The change where the option of my seat on the bus is my choice. The change where we can walk down the street and nobody bothers us. But we also understand that more change is needed. The hearts are crying out because of the reflection of the indifference that we feel in our city, Lord God. And we know that this indifference is more than what we can handle as individuals, as people, as mortal bodies, Lord God. But we thank you for reminding us yes. that we need somebody who is greater than us to handle the pain that we are feeling today. Yes. 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 Father, remind us that to be unified does not mean that we have to be the same. Yes. Whether we are white or black or Cavedian or Native American or a pastor with a collar or a pastor with a leather jacket, it doesn't matter what we are, together we can be unified for you today, Lord God. So we're praying, Lord God, that a door is open that we could not open by ourselves. A door that's open and we pray that we have the heart to walk through it together and to sit down and to listen to the stories of why we talk and live the way we live and pray yes, yes. that we can come together yes, to make this city what it was called to be. Yes, a city of champions for you. Yes, Not the city of champions that we want it to be, but a city of champions that you've called it to be. Yes, so we thank you for this open I, we thank you for our listening ears, and we pray that we can bow our knees and submit ourselves to what you want to do in a unified city today. We are crying out, Lord God, and we know that you hear. 
So we thank you for this time. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I'd like to read one verse of scripture. It's taken from when Jesus instituted the Last Supper, the Eucharist, the Mass, whatever it is that we might call it. He said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let's pray. Lord, you promised us a gift, the gift of peace. So where is it? Well, you gave us the gift, but we have the maintenance policy. We have to keep it going. It just doesn't happen once and then it's all over because our hearts are fallen. And at that same supper you declared to men who had followed you for three years yes, yes. that one of them would betray you. Mm -hmm. And to their credit, for the first time, they owned up to their own part in the deal. They did not point across the table and say, is it him? Mm -hmm. They said, is it I? Yeah. The question today that is before us yes, yes, is, yes. is it us? Maybe I shouldn't try to answer for anyone else. I will answer for myself. I have to confess to my contribution, perhaps not in an open way, but this situation that we have today in America did not occur overnight, and we need to stop acting like it's somebody else. It is us. Yeah. It is me. We have to go to our knees for ourselves. Help us to be practical men and women of God. When we watch the news, not to be informed, but to be inspired and to be incarnated and to be strengthened so that we can be honest about ourselves and say, Oh God, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I need your help. Our city needs your help. Our politicians need your help. Ordinary people need your help. People of every color, every background, every age, and every ethnicity need your help. Because you gave us peace, but we need to keep it going. So cleanse our hearts. We confess our sin. But rather than pointing out the ills of others, we are here to say, Lord God, we're gathered here. We're interested in doing something. Would you fill us with your spirit and would your spirit manifest itself in a new love and appreciation for one another? This we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I am reading from uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17. And it reads, Lord, do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, even in the name of Jesus, we ask right now, God, that we would learn to do good. Father God, teach us what good is and what it means, Father. We pray right now in your name, Jesus, Father, that you, oh, Father God, would bring justice to oppression even now in the name of yes, Jesus. Yes. Father, your word has said it, it has spoken it, and now we're asking for you to make it come alive even now, God. We pray, God, for the widow's plea, God. Somebody's lost their husband, somebody's lost their father, and we stand in the gap in the name of Jesus, declaring you to be a faithful God declaring you to be a loving God and a mighty God. We ask even now in the name of Jesus for the fatherless. Somebody lost their father. Somebody lost their mother due to the injustices of this world. But we are declaring and decreeing even now in the name of Jesus that you are a just God. You are a faithful God. And because you are just, because you are right, let your righteousness dwell and indwell in us even now in the name of Jesus. Father, we're asking, Father, 
Father, that you come in, God, and create even now, God. Yes, Father God. God, peace in the land, God. Love in the land. Joy in the land again. Your faith to be restored in the land. Somebody's lost their faith. Somebody's lost their joy. But God, we pray that you will reestablish it even now in your mighty name, Jesus. We are asking your word to take root. We're asking your word to go before us. We're asking for your word to give us guidance even now, God. We are pleading for your mercy. We are pleading for your grace. And we are asking, God, that you would do what only only you can do. You're the great and mighty God. Even when we don't have the answers, when we don't know what to do, God, we yeah. turn to you. Yeah. And we turn to you right now for justice. Yeah, we cool. plead for justice. Yeah. And we ask that justice would reign in our land yeah. again. That justice would come into our community again. Yeah, cool. That justice yeah, cool. would be in our governments again. Yeah, cool. We ask for justice, yeah. God. And we ask that your Holy yeah. Spirit lead and guide us yeah. into all truth. Yeah. Because we understand who we are. We are nothing without you great God we are nothing without you and so we call on the blood of Jesus and we ask even now in your precious name that your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven and justice is already in heaven and so justice shall be on the earth in the name of Jesus we pray amen In ancient Israel and to today, yes. Jews pray this way when there's famine, when there's drought, when there's strife, like we have in our community now. I'll say first in Hebrew, then in English. Avinu malkeinu chatanu lifanecha. Our Father, our King, we've sinned before you. Avinu malkeinu einalu melech eleata. Our Father, our King, we have no other God but you. Our great sage taught us that society is sustained by three things, by governments that are righteous and that treat people with integrity, all their people, by deep truth and by peace. We can only have governments that treat people with integrity if we can do the deep work of truth and look in our hearts and understand our racism and understand where we've been not righteous and understand where we've been off and do an honest assessment of ourselves at the individual level, at the communal level. And then we make a reconciliation for peace. And we say every person counts. Shalom in Hebrew means inclusive of everyone. Yes. Everyone needs to count. Just like the mayor said before, no one is left behind. We need to make a true reconciliation. And when we can do that honest assessment in our hearts of truth and make a true reconciliation, then we have a chance to actually have laws and actually have authorities and actually have systems that work for everyone. Our systems are deeply broken. Yes. As the chief mentioned and the mayor mentioned, we need deep healing in this country. We need all three of these things, truth, peace, and righteousness. And let us say amen. 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 Heavenly Father, almighty God in heaven, yes. hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to your holy name. Yeah. We yet praise you. We yet give you glory. We yet give you honor because you are worthy for all the glory and all the honor yeah. and all the praise. Oh, God, we come before you today in the name of Jesus, praying for this city, God. Yeah. Praying, God, that you will heal the land, God. Oh, God, we curse this coronavirus in the name of Jesus, God. Yeah. Out of this city, out of this state, out of our country, God, yeah. out of the world, God. We ask that you take it out right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask now that you, God, you know the condition, you know the situation, God. We ask in Jesus' name that you fix it, God. Fix Bring it, peace, God. Bring peace, God. Love, God. Oh, Father, don't lie hate. do overpower love, God. I remember when Jesus was crucified and he was on the cross. He told us, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Yeah, and all yeah, glory yeah. be to God. This is only for a little while, but there's something great Greater that's in store for 
are the black man and the color man. Amen. You haven't seen nothing yet. The thing that God has in store for us. He said, eyes have not seen, not ears have heard that the thing that is stored up for you and you and you and I, we come to give God the glory. I come to tell you, don't give up. Don't let hate take over love. You keep on loving one another regardless of condition, regardless of situation. Keep on loving. Keep on loving. Yeah. Keep on loving. Keep on loving. Heaven belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This city needed this. Hallelujah. It's unfortunate that due to the COVID-19 that the whole entire city could not be here today. We are hurting, we are angry, and we are frustrated. Yes. However, there are times to protest, and then there are times for prayer. Yes. Why am I holding this candle? Because when you light a candle at a vigil, it is a nonviolent way to raise awareness and to motivate change. Today we pray, and tomorrow we will motivate the change. Right. My message today is a message of hope. Hope for the children, hope for Brockton, yes. and hope for our country. Yes. People at times give up on hope, yes. but hope is a powerful thing. Yes, it it helps us carry on in difficult times. Yes. We have to hope that this won't be it like this forever. Yes. Let me say that again. We have to hope that it won't be like this forever. Amen. Okay. And I would like to close with a few words that I know you've already heard, but I think it's important that you hear them today. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. We long for healing. We long for justice. We long for unity. I will hold unto hope for these things. I will do battle on my knees. May injustice bow to Jesus as we turn our hearts and pray. Thank you. Blessings to everyone that are here today. And let us not forget that we are here because of George Floyd. Could someone say his name, please? George. I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you. Could someone say his name, please? George. And this is why we are here. And I know that we're here for a prayer vigil, and I defer to the mayor and to all these great clergymen that are here. But let us make something clear in terms of the civil rights movement. We don't want you to come to Brockton to tear up our city. I'm sorry, y'all not saying amen, but I'm going to say it. Amen. We don't want you to come to Brockton to tear up our city. Amen. If you want to come to have a peaceful march, if you want to come to support the family, yeah. do so as the family has asked you to do. Yeah, right. And they said in the name of their son yeah. that you not do it in violence and in a riot. So if you believe that, please say his name. Please say his name. Let us pray. Loving God, draw yourself near to the United States of America. For there is anguish and there is sorrow. Lord, we have lost the soul of George Floyd. But we mourn in solidarity for peace and for justice. Lord, we cry out loud because justice should reign in the land. Lord, there is too much blood. But we know within your power, within the power of Christ, there is healing. We are claiming victory now in the name of Jesus. The Bible is clear. If you turn to Jesus, I'm, I'm speaking Jesus right now. If you turn to him, the healing will come. If this world would turn from its wicked ways, y'all yes, yes, yes. not hearing me. Yes. If this I'm a Pentecostal. Come if this now. world will turn from its wicked ways, yes, then you will see the flow from heaven. Yes. And so I want to end by saying to you that I love you. I love all of you yes. out here. And I love my young people out here. But you need to hear a word from the street. I'm what you call an OG. I was on the streets. I was homeless. I, I did some things, let us just say. So I'm talking to the young folks. I know that you're angry and that you're upset. But there's order in this process. There's order in the civil rights movement. Don't you come to Brockton to tear our city down. Amen. We thank Phyllis Ellison, Bishop Tony Branch of the NAACP for those stirring words. Now we get the opportunity to continue to pray. 
This next segment of prayer will be initially led by Pastor Houston Creighton, who will be praying for courage and boldness for the leadership, both locally and nationally, in our land. Next, it will be followed by Dr. Mark Oliver of Trinity Baptist Church, who will be praying for equity and equal opportunity for all people. Next, we'll have prayer for healing by Father Joaquin of the Brockton Tri Parish. Thereafter, we will have prayer for the kingdom of God to come by Dr. Abraham Waya of Central United Methodist Church. Gracious God, our Father, we come humbly before your presence, seeking your divine intervention into our most feeble and human condition. Lord, we realize we're living in turbulent times, uh, which defies precedence. Lord, we live on unprecedented times. We're experiencing things today that we never dreamed of. Lord, it seems as though the sociological, economic, and health crisis, the political crisis has all merged to come against us. But Lord, we realize that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your power to circumvent these, the wiles of the enemy. We thank you for power that keeps us going when we don't feel like going. We thank you, Lord, for the power that transcends all understanding. Lord, we thank you today for your support. We need you, Lord, in this time. If we could do it, we would be sitting in a board meeting. If we could do it, Lord, we would be sitting in a council meeting. Lord, we have tried many times to resolve these issues, but they still keep coming back. There's no way, Lord, we can make it without you. Amen. People have come here this afternoon from all faith groups, from the political Lord as well, because they need something greater than themselves. Lord, we know that you have the power. We don't have the power. But we remember that when Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. Lord, that means something is blocking our vision. Lord, and you know how to get our attention. And Lord, you have it this afternoon. But we're going to give you all the honor and glory and praise and thank you in advance for what you're going to do in the midst. And we'll know it was nobody but you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. chapter 1, in chapter 1 of the book of Genesis, we hear clearly from God, he says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. That tells me that every human being, every person has been crowned with the glory of God, crowned with the responsibility to represent God. Would you do me a favor and turn to the person on the left? I know we got a social distance, but just say as loud as you can, say, we are equal. We are equal. I think you can do it louder than that. We are equal. We are equal. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we have uh, been praying to you, and we acknowledge you that thou art God, and we acknowledge that we are helpless without you but lord we we confess to you that we we use the word equal and equality so easily we agree that we like to consider ourselves equal but lord there are many who even though when we say it don't believe it and so lord we confess to you 
that you have made every man, every woman, to bear your image, to bear your likeness. Uh, that's, that means, Lord, that just as the, the Father is equal to Jesus and Jesus is equal to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit equal to the Father, that means that we are all equal as you are equal with one another. And, Lord, we must bear your image in equality. And so, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for the assignment, but we confess, Lord, that we can't do it without your strength. So, Lord, show us the idols of our heart that are keeping us from doing that. Show us the, the, the fear in our being that prevents us from being people who lift up that equality, that image bearing. And Lord, as we doing that, we acknowledge that we want equal opportunity. And while as, as much as we like to use that phrase as well, mm -hmm. uh, Lord, equal opportunity for many is a closed door. And so, Lord, we ask that you would show us how to kick down some of those doors. You would show us how to do it together. Lord, let's don't just tell the oppressed to do it on their own. Let's do it together. Lord, we ask that, that where, 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 there's, where there's been white privilege gained unrighteously, that you would remove it. We ask, Lord, that where, where blessing is needed and where those who need to be lifted up because the opportunity hasn't been there, that you would, you would raise the ground, that you would work in every community. Lord, we ask for those equal opportunities in, in quality of life, in jobs and all those things. We ask for the equal opportunity in front of the police officer, in front of the court judge. Lord, we ask for that because we are your image bearers. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. If your conscience will permit you, could you take a knee with me? Thy kingdom come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thy kingdom come, O oh God. Yes and grant peace to the soul of your servant, George Floyd. Thy kingdom come, O God, and grant comfort and consolation and peace to his family, his friends, and the entire nation that grieves the passing of this young man. Yes, yes, yes. Thy kingdom come, O God, in the hearts of policemen who need to see everyone as your child. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thy kingdom come, O God, and your spirit break the hearts of stone that mm. dehumanize mm. other persons. Yes, 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 Lord. Thy kingdom come, O God, and your light shine in the places of darkness that makes some act so wickedly. All right. Thy kingdom come, O God, in the city of Brockton. Yes. Thy kingdom come, O God, in our mayor yes. and this building and all who work here, yes. that we all might experience your kingdom, yes, Lord. your peace. Yes, Lord. Thy kingdom come, O God, in the heart of the chief of police here in Brockton yes. and all those who work with him, yes. that they too might see in everyone here a reflection of your beauty. Yes, Thy kingdom come, O God, in the streets of Washington, D.C. Yes, Thy kingdom come, O God, in the White House. Right. Thy kingdom come, O God, and break down those barriers that make people blind. Yes. The house of peace yes. is built on the foundation of justice. Yes. The tree of peace is watered by justice. Yes, we, your people, O oh God, surrender ourselves to you. We offer this prayer in the name of the God who made and makes us. Yes, 
in the name of Christ who saved and saves us, in the name of the Holy Spirit who empowers us to get up from our knees and create a different world. Amen. As our time of prayer comes to a conclusion, it's my prayer that you understand this fact, that this was a prayer service starter. Mm -hmm. What today is supposed to be about in our beloved city of champions is that today ought to start a revolution of prayer that leads to a revolution of action that has an outgrowth of justice and peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. The Brockton Clergy Caucus, the Brockton Interfaith Clergy Caucus is one that desires to stand for justice. And it's to that aim we desire as clergy in this city and in this region to come alongside our mayor and our police force in continuing to ensure that justice is served and served accordingly and that community is a part of any use of force policies as it pertains to our constituents. Can we say amen to that? Amen. I believe it's imperative that as a community that we walk together and we hold each other accountable. And we're so grateful for the heart of our mayor. It's imperative that we stand together and walk together with him and our chief of police and our police officers in this land to ensure that justice is not just an idea but justice becomes a reality in our right. city. Amen. Amen. On that note, it's my esteemed privilege to call forth Pastor Hazel Patterson of the Restoration Community Baptist Church. I saw you move. I just, I just, thank you, Bishop. I just want to thank everybody and a uh, couple of things. This is about everyone against racism, everyone against bigotry. And that t-shirt speaks volumes right there. White silence equals white consent. Ah. And we have to remember that because that speaks volumes. That's the truth right there, absolute truth. So I know we're gonna conclude. Uh, I don't think Phyllis Ellis was feeling well, so our thoughts right. and prayers go to Phyllis. She had to leave, she wasn't feeling well. But this is day one of many days. This isn't a one-off. And as the bishops and, and clergy know, we pray twice a month. Twice a month we pray. I'm a very religious guy. I follow the teachings of Christ every day. Amen. Today is a day that changes everyone's lives. Let's do it together. Thank you. God bless you all. Come on, let's, let's give the mayor another hand. <laughs> Pastor Manny, let's give Pastor Manny a hand. Let's give yourselves a hand. Amen. We're in this together. The closing scripture, Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. The NIV Bible reads as follows. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 12. The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer in Brockton. Excuse me, that's my Bible. <laughs> I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place, Brockton, for myself as a temple for sacrifices. Verse 13, when I shut up the heaven so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send plague among my people. Key verse, last verse. If my people 
Brockton, yes, sir. city of champions, Come on now. Come on. if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves yes. and pray Come on. and seek my face, Come on. turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive Brockton, forgive Boston, forgive Minnesota, Minneapolis, forgive this world. Hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and I will heal the land. Get ready, city of champion. God is about to heal the land. Pastor Patterson. Father God, we come this day in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we have sent up our request, our petitions to you, O oh God. And we have sent them up because you said if we call on you, you will hear our prayers and you will answer our prayers. So, oh God, because we are yours and you are ours, we know that you will give us all that we ask for. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I know that the prayers have gone up. They've gone to the temple of your grace, oh God. You are hearing them. The angels are rejoicing that we might change, that the peace will come to us. Healing will come to us because you are God. Yeah. And so now may the grace yeah. of our great Lord and yeah. Savior Jesus the Christ rest in you, abide in you, yeah. both now and forevermore. And the people of God, the children of God, the saints of God said amen. 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 Hallelujah. This concludes our time. Go in peace and be the peace that the Lord has called you to be in the city. God bless you.